Okay, everyone, just testing the audio. Let me know you can hear me. And then when I do, we will get started. All right, Rolf can hear me. Awesome. All right, let's get started, guys. Hello, everybody, and welcome to LFL episode number 89. All right, how are you guys all doing today? Good to see you all. Lots of regulars in the house, and we've got some fun stuff lined up for us this week. Um, who's all there? Oh, I see lots and lots of regulars. We get everyone from Orca Pest, I see Dojo, Rolf, Odd Gear, Susan Misty. Uh, Zach Multimedia, Andrew Nichols, uh, Dojo, Yvonne, Orca Pest, I think it is, Alistair, um, well, Jerry, lots of people in the house, Philip Gregg, good to see you, uh, Bruce, is Bruce in the house though, I don't see Bruce there, um, maybe he is here, David Holstock, good to see you buddy, Warren D, good to see you, um, so we've got people here from all over the world, so Without spending a whole ton of time, you know, just saying hi to everybody, um, why don't we just kick off right now? Happy Thursday, everybody, and let's just go straight over to my screen right now to the desktop. Now, for those of you who don't know, um, what we do here is uh, we have a, a, you know, we're going live right now. And then um, just drop your name into the chat, say hello, and everybody there. Um, we've got a very friendly community there. So if you're here live between 1 p.m. Pacific time, then uh, you're in the live chat. If you miss the beginning, don't worry, because the replay will be live on YouTube right after uh, we finish this. And then also, if you're watching the replay, you're part of the replay crew. You're just as much of the community. I know for some of you, time constraints and different things like that, um, you can't necessarily join us live. So just drop a comment there into the comment section and... Um, and, you know, and I'll, I'll read that and all the comments that happened live. And afterwards, I do read them all. So, all right, guys. No Bruce, no Tracy today. Oh, that's terrible. Um, maybe they'll show up. Maybe they won't. Polka Dot Studio, good to see you. Uh, Colin Little, good name there. And yes, hit the like button, guys. Um, all right. So why don't we just jump right in right now onto the desktop. I've got a couple of things I want to show you. Um, so... I decided, you know, why not do this kind of threshold effect? Uh, I don't know what would you call this, a woodcut effect threshold um, is the tool used to make it. It's just kind of a, maybe, you know, like an old woodblock print or however, you know, it's kind of something a little bit retro. Um, what would you guys call this style? I'm kind of curious to see um, what you guys call this style because I know I've seen a, a number of different things. And, uh, and I've got a couple of different ways we're going to create this. So just drop into the chat there what you would call this particular style. And I've got a really fast way of doing it. And then I've got another way that maybe gives a little bit more control. We will see. So I'm just going to go through here and I'm just going to select all the layers. This is essentially how I made it. Let's delete them all. And just go down to a background image poster effect. That works. Dana, good one. Good one, Retro. Um, half tone, screen print, all of these are definitely, my screen hasn't changed, are you, well, I haven't, um, it should have, let me know guys, if you see something changed on the screen, nostalgia, these are good, I just want to make sure that the screen is working, I believe it is, um, if your screen hasn't changed, maybe you need to just, uh, refresh the browser, uh, rail, uh, everybody else, let me know if the screen has changed, and I before I continue screen is working good all right that's very important uh the live looked grunge she looks retro the live looked grunge okay so maybe you know these are all different types of effects and uh so let's go ahead so we're going to start just with this photo and then I will do a couple of different ones so it's kind of a you know you could even I've even seen it kind of used as a you know almost like a propaganda effect you know kind of the, the old uh retro 
kind of style. Let me close this out here and I'm going to close, I'm just going to close out the animation panel because we don't need that. All right, so I'm going to show you a way that I just figured out, which is like super, super fast way of getting this result. And then I'll go through and show you a way where we can get more control. All right. Oh, by the way, Photoshop, I don't know if you guys have updated it. There's a new update in Photoshop, which is available. And if you get this big blue share button on the top, that means you have the correct version or the latest version. There's no correct version, whatever works. And if you click on there, you know, it gives you the option to share cloud documents and all kinds of things. So anyway, let us start with this effect. So what we're going to do is just go down to the adjustment layers. And then we're going to choose threshold. All right. And when we go into the threshold, you can see there's 128 levels of gray that this works on. And as we change this, you can see it shows us different parts of the image. So it starts to just kind of carve those out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start here and just show the minimal amount of detail. So I've moved that threshold over right now. It's about 24. So what I'm going to do rather than have to, you know, go through and create this effect a bunch of times, I'm going to reuse the adjustment layer, which is why it's nice to use an adjustment layer over using a regular layer. And then we're going to use the Avengers keyboard shortcut. Now I call it the Avengers because it's a shift option command. That would be shift option command on Mac, shift alt control on Windows. And uh, I call it the Avengers because the whole team are uh, working together. So the alt option might be the Hulk, you know, the shift might be, I don't know, Captain America. And then the command key would be actually the command key would be Captain America. All right. So if you're not comic book nerds, just hold down the three um, modifier keys and then the E key. And that'll create a stamp visible layer on top. Awesome. So why don't we hide that stamp visible, go, go back to our adjustment layer. And now we're going to move the threshold up to show more of the image. Maybe I'm just, what I'm watching here is the glasses and I want to get it just where the glasses look nice. There we go. That's a nice kind of a setting there. And let's create the stamp visible again. Hold down those three and then hit the command D. And then we're going to hide that again, go back. And once again, we're going to go in here and I kind of like it just here. Notice where we're getting a nice kind of an outline. So you would go to the places where maybe you would do a block cut or something like that to get the different, um, you know, the different paints or the different colors. So I'm going to hit those keyboard shortcuts again. And by the way, you could probably save those as an action. Or if you're using a Wacom tablet, you could program the tablet to actually have that command uh, shift, you know, whatever, all those <laughs> as a button so you know it's up to you all right so i'm just going to hide that and we're going to do one more let's go and this time i want to get this little looney tunes kind of that's all folks kind of thing happening here um i probably just butchered the looney tunes um or maybe i sounded loony i don't know <laughs> so all right guys so now i've created those particular effects on those different layers now, what we can do is we can go through and just turn them on. And you can see, you know, oh, these are not showing through very well, are they? Okay, so this is what we're going to do. So we're going to start on the bottom and we're going to colorize this. So I'm going to hit the Control or Command U. And this will give us hue saturation. You could create these as adjustment layers if you wanted. But I'm just going to show the simple way right now. So what I want to do is colorize this. So I'm going to hit that colorize button. Now, I've said this to you guys before. Hue, saturation, lightness. Hue is the amount of color. Or hue is the actual color. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, violet, indigo. Although some people say indigo is not actually a color of the rainbow or it doesn't exist. It's right over here. Um, saturation, we can increase it or decrease it. You know, things just change all the time. You know, like Pluto's a planet. Now it's not a planet. And, you know, now indigo is not a color of the rainbow. Can't keep up with it. So anyway, um, notice that doesn't matter what we do, nothing changes. And that's because we're trying to change black and white. Now, I've shown some of you this before. Maybe some of you got it or some of you didn't. The way to make this work is the lightness slider. The lightness slider is not to lighten or darken your images. Like people that do hue saturation and then adjust lightness to brighten their image, it's like, no, 
Don't ever do that again. Use levels or curves for that. Even exposure, but lightness is used to inject color when we're colorizing. So let me show you. If I go to darker, now when I go there, what we're doing is we're taking that white and saying, oh, white can now be a color. And we can adjust the hue. We can adjust anything we want into that white. Now, if you prefer to adjust it, the blacks, well, we go the other way. Let's push that up. And now what happens is, oh, look at that. Now we can apply color to the blacks. So this is how you really want to be using this. So why don't we do, I don't know, like a nice kind of blue tone here. Why don't we start with like, I don't know. We could go that way. And what I'm going to do is I want to adjust both the blacks and the whites. So here's a little trick. Apply hue saturation. Then hit control U once again. Hit colorize again. Now we bring it down and look at this. Now we're adjusting the whites, but notice the blacks are not pure black anymore. So we're getting this nice kind of a monotone sepia tone. I don't know, whatever we call it. I need, I really need to brush up on the names of some of these, but some of them have real names and some of them just people just call them so many things. And these days, the names we assign to effects are not even necessarily the correct names anymore. For example, you know, people call something a duotone or a split tone and half the time it's not really a duotone or a split tone anymore or spot color spot color is something used in printing uh, when you're using pms colors but now as we take a black and white photo make one little bit color and we call it spot color so it's very hard to get the correct terms when it comes to like seo and different things like that all right so there's a um a different kind of just hit the magic like button yeah guys hit that like button i appreciate that so here we go the hue will change their color and we've got so many options we can do here i kind of like that i think we've got a nice base going here let's go with this color and notice i'm not going to push really high in the saturation because the retro kind of kind of colors tend to be a little bit less and also you know i don't know how many of you are designers but if you want to make something look more designery um keep the saturation low um all right so we're moving up here and it's kind of sort of a little joke but not completely all right so control because that actually really does work um so we're gonna hit control g for group and i'm gonna pop this one into group and the reason for this is i'm just gonna preserve the black and white um and uh, i i can just change the blend mode here to get different results Look at this. See what happens as we go through. We can get different results just by changing that blend mode. And if you wanted to apply a black just over the top of this, you could. Uh, let's go for multiply. And you could just drop the opacity down and just like literally just go in and start to do stuff like this. But I want to give this a little bit of color. So I'm going to select it. Hit Control U. And we're going to do the same thing. We're going to hit our colorize. And what I want to do is take the blacks and I want to put some color into our blacks so let's pull that up and maybe hit the saturation just a little bit so we can see what's going on and now i can put in a secondary color so we could put in like maybe something like that bluish kind of a tone and notice as i adjust that lightness i can apply a secondary color in there so now we've got two colors going on now, I'm not cutting these out right now. We'll do this in another one, but I just want to keep this quite simple. So I'm just going to um, pop this into a group and let's change this back to our color blend modes once again. Let's select this, Control U, and, you know, we can go in here and just kind of play around with this. Let's pull that all the way up and then find a different just playing around in here a little bit now once we get to this third one it's going to get a little bit more tricky um, as far as like changing those colors because now it wants to force it into black so this is where we would do things like maybe cut it out um, which which i want to do in a, a separate one here but i'm just going to take this let's continue here i just want to lighten this up a little bit so it's not completely so we've got a, an, a 
another tone going on here and I haven't hit colorize on there I just wanted a gray and then we could hit this black on top and then we can change this into different you know blend modes let's go to multiply mode and see we just you know there's little kind of black areas into into the um just the very very shadowy areas now you know there's other things you can do of course you know you can invert it and try different like blend modes here and put lighter tones in here you know there's there's lots and lots of things we can do with this so let's do that here let's put a little bit of color in here and we could go for something completely you know crazy different maybe not there but now I'm getting a little vibe of, uh, you know, kind of a Sex Pistols poster. I don't know if you guys are kind of getting that vibe a little bit now. So we, you know, we have the ability to go in and do, you know, we can add colors to the light colors. We can add colors to the dark colors and get some like just kind of really funky effects. Now, if you want to shift the whole thing, what we can do is create a, another hue saturation adjustment layer on top and uh hey tony good to see you and we can play around here just by changing the hue and shifting this hue it just moves everything together and see what we can do we can start to get some just experimenting looking for some stuff i just want to hit the and this is probably where it would be nice to be using um you know adjustment layers but i just want to play around with this i want to push that into the pink there we go now we're getting some color harmonies that are working because that color was clashing before, but sometimes, you know, maybe that's what you're going for, a kind of a clashing color. But now we've got more of a color harmony going here. And it's because all of these are kind of just working um, into more, you know, complementary. We've got the right, the reds and the blues kind of working together, uh, you know, for the pinks. And everything has a little, you know, we've got a lot of red tones here, just even in the blues there. So it just, I don't know, it just feels harmonious, uh, you know, Sometimes you look at a color and it just doesn't feel right. It clashes and then you just move it a little bit. And now we've got a kind of a more harmonious color. But once again, sometimes there's times when you want to have a nice clashing color there um, just for that pop. And you would see that um, quite a bit. Would you turn it into a smart object? And yeah, sure you could, Philip. Um, absolutely could. Um, all right. So let's go in and see what else we can do here. Um, Much too clean and stylish to be Sex Pistols. Yeah, of course, the uh, subject matter, but I was t referring more to the uh, the color toning there, um, Kirsty, than the particular image. Yes, the, uh, Sex Pistols will be much more grungy and uh, broken up for sure. All right, so let's put some type on the top of this. So we're just going to grab in here and we're just going to call this um, Retro. So yeah, I agree with you on the subject matter there. Um, so let's try um, some different fonts. So we can just roll through. This is what I used for the uh, cover for our uh, for our banner. Okay, so what do we do here if I want to put this behind her? This is where it's fun to use things like Blend If, and they're very very easy to use. Let's hit Effects, and we're going to go up under the Blending Options here, and under the Blending Options, we can use. Blend if. So what we want to do is I want to hide this. This is a lighter color. So I want to show the underlying layers. I'm going to take the shadow and the underlying layers and notice as I pull that across and I'll just split it just to give a little bit of a smoother transition there. And not much, just a little bit there. Now it's showing, allowing those lighter colors to show through. The nice thing about this is I can move this around. I can reposition it and, uh, I don't really have to worry about keeping and cutting it out because it just kind of works like that now. Now, of course, we could apply, you know, some kind of an adjustment layer on here or just drop the opacity, which is what I did on the, the cover image. I just dropped the opacity down a little bit just to kind of soften it. Hello from PA. Good to see you, Steve. Um, you know, and then, of course, you know, we can change the color of this, you know, all, all that kind of fun stuff. All right, so just kind of playing around. So let's have a look at something else here. Let's go into this image and we're going to do a similar thing, but I'm going to show you in a, a slightly different way of doing it. We're going to start off the beginning and 
you know, if you were going to do this, it might even be great to create an action. So why don't we do that? Let's create an action for this. Um, filter, uh, well, not filter windows. Let's go to actions. And if any, if you guys are subscribed, what I'll do is I'll give this action away um, next. If you're on the list, which is uh, just photoshopcafe.com, there's a link there where you can join our list. Um, just make sure, what's the name of that font? Uh, I can tell you the name of that font. Let's go there. Uh, so just join our list and then I'll give you guys the action that I'm about to create. And uh, and if it doesn't work well, I'll create a better version. So this is Depressionist 3 is the name of this font. All right. Let's go here. And why don't we create an action? I'm going to call this one uh, Retro. Uh, retro Poster. All right, there we go. Okay, so I am now recording an action. So what I'm going to do for the action is I'm going to go to the adjustment layer. I'm going to create the threshold. And why don't we start here with a minimal amount. Oh, I like how that's just kind of getting those dots and stuff. That's cool. Let's do our command shift option E thing. Hide that. Go back to the layer. Let's bring the threshold on a little bit more. Kind of like that. Looks like a, kind of something you would get in an old comic book here with the black and white. I, I kind of like that. Let's do that again. The whole keyboard shortcut combination, which is Command Shift Option E or Control Alt Option E or what, what, whatever. All the Avengers and E. So let's go here. And uh, we're getting another version of it. Now, notice that I'm doing it such a way as I'm building it up from the backwards going this way. And what it does is it just allows to um, to build them. If you go the other way, it's kind of hard to stack them. You'd have to actually reverse the order to get the effect you're looking for. All right, so we've gone there. Now we've hidden that. Now what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go through here. On the top, I want to just show... Maybe we're just going to show the white area. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to go under the select and we'll choose the color range. And we can set our color range to capture the highlights. Click OK. So now we've got our highlights there. And then we can just mask it up. Boom. All right, let's go to the next layer. We're going to do the same thing. Let's go to our select color range and we want to select just the highlights let's go back there color range there it is we're working on the highlights again so we're selecting those highlights let's create that mask cool let's hide that layer let's go to the next layer select color range Selecting all these white areas. Once again, just the highlights will do that. Click OK. Create a layer mask. Awesome. And now I'm just going to stop the action. And the reason I'm stopping the action is because we don't need to do anything to the bottom layer. Let's hide this. And let's start with the bottom layer. Now, this time I'm going to be good and I'm going to put these into groups. And then I can apply adjustment layer. So let's go in here. We're going to do an adjustment layer. So this is a more long-handed way, but it's going to give us a little bit more control. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go in and we're going to grab our hue saturation once again. Colorize. And you could keep recording the action if you wanted. The reason I've stopped recording this action is just because I want to manually go through and, and do this here. So, um, you know, it's entirely up to you how you want to do it. Let's go in and give it a let's give it a funky color here. All right, that's kind of interesting. All right, so now we're going to go onto the next layer here. Grab the group and let's apply the adjustment layer. Let's grab the hue saturation and that's good. 
There we go. Now notice it's affecting everything. So if you hold down the Alt or the Option key, we can clip it. So now it's just doing the layer underneath. Look at this. By default, it's affecting everything underneath. And make sure we turn our, our layer on too. And we're on the right layer. Hang on, let's go to the correct layer. There we go. <laughs> make sure you're on the right layer. All right, so and let's turn all these other ones off just so we can see everything. Here we go. There we go. Okay, so we've got our background layer. Then we've got our next layer here. There we go. And notice as I change it, it affects everything. We don't want it to do that. Hold down, go between the two layers. Hold down the Alt or the Option key, and that will clip it. So now we're just clipping it to that layer underneath. And now we can make our adjustments. And if we've got these other layers, let me just tear this out a little bit so we can see a bit better. And I'm going to move the actions layer out of the way too. All right, there we go. All right, so there's our bottom layer. Cool. There's our next layer we're working on right now. And let's play around with this. Get some interesting colors going. Let's get something really just weird and funky. I kind of like that. Let's go into the next layer. Turn that on. Grab our hue saturation adjustment layer once again. Hit the alter option. Clip it so it's just affecting the layer underneath. Let's hit colorize. And let's play around here. What have we got going on here? Oh, there we go. All right, so let's apply something even more just... So I'm going for stuff that's just kind of like maybe a little more uh, less harmonious. Let's go back in here. Let's do the same thing. Apply the hue saturation adjustment layer. And make sure we turn that layer on, colorize, clip it, alt or option key, here we go. And now we can change these colors. All right, so the nice thing about being able to do it this way is that we can go through any of these colors now. And if we don't like the colors, we can go through and change them. Now what I'm going to do on here, I have an idea because we've changed the whites on here and notice we've just got the black showing through. I'm thinking if I add a second hue saturation adjustment layer and clip that down there, although it shouldn't matter about clipping because there's basically nothing underneath that we're worried about. And I hit the colorize here. And then I push this up to lighten it. Am I going to be able to get everything? No. Let me go back. There we go. That's better. All right. So I don't need to clip these to the bottom layer. Let's go in there. Grab that one. There we go. And so now if I don't want the blacks, what I'm doing is I am literally going in here and changing those colors. Man, we can get some very, very wide array of colors and just like really weird kind of funky things going on here if we want. And uh, yeah, so that's just something like I wasn't going for something harmonious. I was going for something a little bit more unharmonious, which I think we've got going on there. And let's go to the hue saturation. Oh, I'm glad you like this, Chris. Thank you. And, um, you know, we can change the hue, of course. Now we're sliding this across. We're just changing the colors of everything. And we can change it to whatever, you know, we want to do with it. We can adjust the whole saturation across the board. You can make it really, like, kind of crazy, you know. And uh, these are not, you know, my particular tastes in color, but I know that particular styles 
um, you know, these, these are kind of used for it. Now, if you want to make things more harmonious, just hit colorize and then you can just unify everything and go for a, you know, a different kind of a look. And I'm just, I'm just moving these. I'm not necessarily trying to, you know, get to the final result. I'm just moving these just to show you, um, you know, the variations. So as I pass something you might like, shout it out and, and let us know like, Hey, I like that particular effect and just see how we are just getting a variety as I'm moving through here. You might recognize, you know, in transition here, some of the different styles that you might've seen. Now, the other thing that's kind of cool about this is that we can also, you know, use the masks um, to help us here. So, for example, if I want to replace this mask, so I want to have like the color applying just in one area. Here's another variation. I can take this mask, hold down the outer option key, drag it to the top layer, replace that mask and notice what is this doing here is that, you know, that mask is allowing us to apply that just to certain areas. So now we're not just stuck with one color, we're getting other colors. And we could try this with other masks. Let's try this mask here and just hold the outer option, we'll replace it. And now we get this mask instead. And this give it, it gives us another variation. Now, the other thing we can do is uh, if I wanted to do the inverse of that, I could select and hit control, control I and I could inverse the mask and see how we're, now we're able to do a monotone everywhere and just allow the color to come through. And if I wanted to do it in another area, like say down the bottom here, but I want to inverse this. So I'm going to hold the Alt or the Option. I'm going to drag it up. Now see how that mask looks? If I hold down the Shift key, that will replace the mask with an inverted version of it. Look at that. And see how that gives us just another effect once again. You know, and then there's other ways we could do, you know, we could go to color blend mode. We could start to drop the opacity down and start to blend it in and just see the variety of effects that we're able to get just by, you know, experimenting, you know, trying, you know, some different things. And uh, so essentially we're creating that effect and then we're just using masks and we're using hue saturation adjustments to just create a whole variety of effects for that particular um, kind of thing. All right, so how are you guys doing there? Hopefully um, some of these, maybe there's some tips in here that are um, appealing to you. If so, let me know in the comment, you know, hey, I like that, that particular thing that you did or, um, you know, and also if you guys haven't yet uh, hit that like button, hit that like button, it helps us with the YouTube algorithm. Okay, I wanna show you something that's new in an update inside of Photoshop, and then we're gonna continue with another retro effect. Maybe I'll turn this into one in the end. Why not, we will. But I wanna show you something that has been updated. Um, and I'm just gonna copy this. I mean, I could convert to a smart object if I wanted, it would probably work as well. But something that's been updated here, I don't know how many of you are using the, uh, let's go, under the where are you under stylize i believe oil paint so oil paint is that filter that has come and gone in photoshop so many times they add it they take it away they break it they fix it um, so one of the things that's kind of nice about it now is if you use this it's now taking advantage of the gpu on your computer or the graphics processing unit so when you get this open, turn on preview and you'll see the oil filter. Now, one of the things about the oil filter is it used to be slow. Look at this. Because it's doing the GPU now, the updates are almost instant. You can bring the detail down. You can go for something like this. You know, we can change the scale of it. Look at this. We're just changing all these different settings in here now. And as you can see, it is super fast now. So if this is something that you like to use, you know, there we go. Now you can do it instantly. And of course, lighting, if you know, you have to have that kind of on, which gives us that effect. Um, let's take that off, take the lighting off and we can simplify the photo. Like, let's look at this, see how it just will kind of create a different kind of an effect there. And let's take the bristle detail down. So we're reducing the amount, maybe 
play around with that, push the stylization up. It kind of starts to look very kind of smooth, almost painterly in a different kind of a way, cartoony almost. But then when we hit the lighting, that gives us the texture. You can change the direction of that texture. And the shine is, you know, how much of that you want to add on there. And uh, yeah, so essentially, I just wanted you guys to see that. You know, let's bring it down a little bit and bring that shine down a little bit. Probably looks better. Bring it down to a very minimal amount. There we go. Maybe that starts to look a little more realistic. And uh, you guys can play around with that. So, uh, Tracy joined us. Good to see you, Rod Shelley. And, uh, yeah, so there's another thing that you could do here just using the oil paint filter. And uh, sometimes, you know, I've got it on a different layer. Let's hit Control J. Let's pop it to the top and let's do a find edges is another way to work with this. So let's just choose a filter and then we'll move past here pretty quickly. So let's just do our, um, where are you? There you go, find edges, and then, you know, try blend mode. If you want to have a little bit more of an outline kind of going with that as well. So there it is without the outline. There's a little bit of an outline just kind of added. And I think that kind of helps a little bit. Give us a little bit more realism in there. Yeah. Pops back a little bit of detail. Doesn't make it look so smudgy, smudgily smudgy. And I think it works on a smart object. So let's find out for sure. So I'm going to right click convert to smart object and let's go under the filter. So this is just a quick update, oil paint and yep, works on a smart object. So you have that option, which is fun uh, because that also gives us the ability to do things here with uh, different blend modes and different things like that. So what I did is I just double clicked on that little adjustment, brings up the blend modes and you can do things like you know, kick it in with a blend mode here, like an overlay or something and mix it together. Um, you know, it gives us a whole or soft light, hard light. It's probably going to be a little better and see how now it gives us a whole different variation, a whole different look. So, uh, yeah. All right. Let's move on. What I'm going to do is I'll use this just going to reset everything in here. Let's get rid of that smart filter. Just delete it. And we're just back to the original photo. Let's just, I don't know, let's just flatten it for now. We'll rasterize the layer. All right. So you guys doing good? Um, and if you have any questions, just pop the questions in there and I will do my best to catch them. I don't have Bruce to bring them to my attention at the moment. Um, here we go. Question from PhotoMaker. Is the second mask on each layer a vector mask? I just got here possibly to get two normal masks on a layer. Great question. So if you create the mask in here and you choose to create a mask, and um, let me just do something so you can see it. So let's talk about that. Masks, multiple masks on a layer. So if I take this and I invert it, and then I pop this on top, and then we create a layer mask, and I can you know apply a gradient here. And so now we've got this mask working. If I go to create, by the way, black hides, white shows. So if I hit the shift key, that turns on and off the mask so that all we're doing is just blending that down. I'll show you alter option. Black is hiding, white is showing. So that's what the mask is doing. Just to show you, yes, if you create a second mask, that is going to create a vector mask. You can't necessarily um, apply you know, the same kind of effects on that mask. So this is what you would do is you just take your layer and you put it into a layer group. So you can drag it into the layer group and that will put it into a group here. And then what you can do is apply a mask on top of there. And now we can go from this side to that side. And now what we're doing is we've got two masks working together. There's one mask there and one mask there. So you can stack masks on top by putting inside a layer group. That's one way you can do it. Now, if you wanted to nest that even more, just drag that into the new layer group or hit control G will do the same thing, puts inside another group and then we can apply another mask in here. So apply a mask. And then if we wanted to go across the other way, 
just paint there and now we've got three masks working together on the image you can see you know there's the area that's masked there's the area that's masked there's the area that's masked and nothing has changed here because we kind of just went around it so that's uh, to answer that question about those masks that's how you would do it so yeah if you want more than one mask you don't put them on the same layer you um Let's go back to our image. That's how you do it. So that's the answer to that question. Hopefully that was useful. And you can just keep going with those masks, by the way, as you just drop on, put, just keep nesting them in groups, add more and more masks. Okay, so let's do a pixel stretch. So this is a kind of a fun, kind of cool retro effect. And what we're going to do is go under the selection tool. And let's use the single column marquee tool. I don't know if you guys have ever used this. Uh, but what they enable us to do is select one pixel either horizontally or vertically so we're going to do it here let's i'm just looking for something that might have a little bit of variety of color that'll do and then i'm going to hit Control j and what this has done is it's copied see that it's copied a single pixel and now we're going to stretch this so Control t for free transform and I'm going to zoom out. I'm just hitting the Alt or Option key and just zooming. And now we can drag this out. Doesn't look like much is happening. But when we hit the Enter key, what we've done essentially is we've stretched that single pixel all the way across. And because we're going beautifully horizontally or we're going beautifully vertically, we are not getting um, any pixelization and that's because it's only going to pixelize at an angle so let's hit Control t and maybe we could put this at an angle if you wanted to you know go go on and modify this do something different with it all right so we can kind of create that effect now of course we can use our hue saturation uh, let's apply a hue saturation adjustment layer if you want to change the color of it you can unify this color just by clicking on there and choosing colorize and um, you know we can change the color we can do different things here just moving that around so that's how you create that pixel stretch effect now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna drop the opacity down a little bit just to let some of that other color show through not that much maybe up here somewhere and now we're getting something, you know, a little bit more interesting. We can change the hue of that and notice we're getting something a little bit more uniform now. All right, let's do something fun on top of this. Let's create a type layer. And we're going to call it funky. Now, Let's choose a different font because clearly that is not working well. So when we choose the font here, we can roll down and we can look at all the different fonts available inside of Photoshop. Now I'm looking for something a little more fun, maybe a 70s kind of a font. Oh, look at that Metallica. Huh, funny band ones. Some of these are maybe starting to get a little bit closer. But, you know, something a little bit more bubbly kind of looking. And notice that as I roll down here, I can view them. By the way, here's a tip. Sometimes you're doing that and this gets in the way when you're rolling over these. In this case, it's not, but sometimes it does. If that's the case, what you want to do is go hide that. And, you know, we could go into the properties panel and we can roll down into the properties panel or if you want more control, go up under Window, and then you can choose the font. So that's going to be under our something a paragraph. Here we go, character. So we can move this to wherever we want, and then you can roll down and preview. So if you feel so, if your preview is getting in the way then just open it in here. So notice there's three places you can preview your fonts. From the top menu, from the panel, or from the properties panel. In this case, I think, you know, we can just do it from the properties panel. It's going to work nicer. 
So what happens if you don't find a font you want? If you're on Creative Cloud, what you can do is you can choose more from Adobe Fonts. And then what this is going to do is it's going to launch the web browser. And here we are in a web browser. And there used to be a limit on how many you could have. Now, um, Adobe lets you have much more. So let's go under the different tags. Let's look under Funky. So now we're searching. Now, there's other places you can find fonts all over the place. And you guys just drop that into your favorite, uh, your favorite font foundry in there. Uh, you know, we've got New Kansas. And we can preview this and say, OK, that looks kind of fun. But I don't like the quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. Nothing wrong with it. But I just want to see what the words funky look like. So I can type in funky. And let's see if our sample text down here says funky. That looks kind of cool. So I want this font. What is it called? Kansas New Heavy. I'm going to activate the font. Now, if I go back to Photoshop, I'm going to select our font. And let's do Kansas. There we go. New. Now it's added into Photoshop. And now I have this font inside of Photoshop. That's how easy it is to go and find those fonts from Adobe Fonts. All right. So if we want to do that, what I want to do, though, is I'm going to give this a little bit more space. Uh, so let's go under the font options here. And let's not that one. Don't use this and don't use that because you don't want to stretch your type. It looks awful. Better to go here and increasing the tracking or the spacing between the type. Stretched type very rarely ever looks good. All right, so here we go. Funky. Sometimes it will, but that's an exception rather than the rule. All right, so why don't we go ahead and do something here. We're going to go into our layers panel there. Uh, and we are going to apply an adjustment layer under the effects. I want to put a stroke on here. All right, so let's just get that out of the way. And now we're going to work with our layer styles. So first thing, even though I've activated the stroke, we'll get to that. But let's give it a color overlay. Let's give it a different color. Now, if you wanted, you could do a gradient color over here. And uh, under the legacy gradients, you know, we've got some of the, the cool legacy gradients that we could use here for these kind of funky kind of colors that you might have got. <laughs> That's definitely gives us that that kind of a, a feel there. But, um, you know, just let you know that but I'm going to use a color overlay. Let's use a solid color and let's do something. I don't know. Let's grab a bright color. Now let's go under the stroke. I want to make the stroke an outer stroke. So we change that to the outside. All right. So this can be kind of fun to do some different things. I just, just do a black for now. And I want to create another stroke. So if you hit the plus button, it will create another one underneath. And we can change the color of this to, I don't know, something like a blue. And we can increase the size and notice how we get a secondary one here. Let's go with something a little bit more kind of for the error. And then I want to create a third one. You know, I can duplicate it again. This will kind of make it look like a sticker kind of thing. But let's do another one. I'm going to add another one underneath and I'm going to give this one a brownish tone. Make the size bigger. And you can kind of see. So maybe the solid color needs to change to something else. There we go. Now we're starting to get something a little more 70s. And as you can see, you can stack those strokes on top of each other so you know strokes are outlines it's what adobe calls them um so hopefully that is helping you guys um so rod shelley has issues with adobe fonts i'll use a font and something then if i open the file later 
I'll get the messages about the font not being available any longer. It happens frequently. Hmm. Do you have the full uh, Creative Cloud there, Rod Shelley, or are you using, uh, or do you have just the Photoshop and Lightroom package? Um, I'm not sure, you know, if that's the case, um, you know, you can go in there and uh, change some things. So thank you, Misty. She likes the, or, or he, Misty likes the uh, sticker effect. Um, so let's go in and we are going to do another thing on here just for fun. Let's double click on the effects, bring the effects back up. You do have the full CC. Yeah, I would head up Adobe and see what's going on there uh, because that shouldn't be doing that. All right, so we're going in here and another thing I think, I just want to add a drop shadow in there. So let's go down to the drop shadow. Let's take the opacity all the way up. Now you're definitely going to have to do spread because the drop shadow is going to be created the size of the original font. Now size is just going to make it softer. But if you want to see the edges, you're going to have to push the spread. See that? See what I'm doing there? Size just changes the softness of it. Spread will make it bigger, but if you don't give it any size, you're not going to be able to spread it out big enough. And you can drag on this to reposition it. All right. Obviously, I'm not going to do all of that. I just wanted to show you the spread. Let's bring that spread back down a little bit. There we go. And of course, you know, we can position our angle and everything we want here. I'm going to give it a little bit more size, a little bit more spread. And by the way, you can change the distance, make it further away or closer or, you know, and using this little wheel or just dragging will do that. We'll replace the angle and distance just by dragging. And let's take the opacity down to something a little bit more manageable. Around about 40% if we want to pop it. And let's bring the distance down a little bit less. So I just want to kind of make it look, you know, like it's floating a little bit. Um, and if you don't want to make it look floating, you want to make it look more retro, just, you know, hit that size, bring the size all the way down, bring the spread up, and increase your distance until, there we go, and hit that opacity a little bit. And then you can kind of create a more kind of a, Retro, but notice it doesn't expand like it would with everything else. So, you know, just letting you know. Now, if you wanted to expand that, you know, you could just create a selection over it. You know, there's other ways we could do it. You know, we could go there, we could rasterize it or just put it into a smart object. Let me show you this. Um, let me hide our drop shadow. So if I go in here, uh, I hope you understand what I'm doing here. So the shadow is only going to be the size of the type, not the size of the effect as well. So let's put this into a smart object. Everything's there. I can control click. Now I can select the entire thing, but I don't even have to do that. I can just apply my adjustment here, go into the effects and hit a drop shadow. And now the drop shadow is going to be the size of the whole thing with the effect. And uh, I don't have to have the crazy spread or distance anymore. I can go in and just create that drop shadow. So I, I hopefully you guys got that. So the original drop shadow would only be the size of the inner type. It wasn't including the entire effect. So what I did is I right click, put it into a smart object, and then I can apply the effect on there. And now that will give me a shadow that will encompass the whole shape and not just the type. So it was just cool, cool little tip there. Um, all right. So, you know, let's have a look right now. And um, I've got a few images that you guys have shared from our Facebook group. And um, let's let's have a look at that. So you guys got any questions on this right now? Just pop that question into the uh, chat there. And um, and I will answer that if I see it. Um, 89, we should have at least 89 likes. Absolutely. We don't have 89 likes. What's up with you guys? Come on. Hit that like button. <laughs> That's the thumbs up. Uh, can you see the effect? Can you save the effect as a preset? Yes, absolutely you can. Um, Zach Multimedia is asking. Yeah, sure. 
what we do is I'll just double click in here and here's our effect and um, let's go up under our window and we're going to open up our styles window here and uh, we'll go into my styles and we'll call this retro and voila there's that style so if I'm working somewhere else and uh, let's go here and I've got blah 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 and then I want to apply the style I can just drag it onto there and boom yes so we can create that as a reusable style thank you for um, suggesting that or, or asking that um, so we could show you yeah all of these can be saved as styles and uh, you know anything you do in these kind of styles can be saved and reused And it does have the original drop shadow, even though it's not showing all the styles, even if they're in there and they're hidden, when you create that preset here or the style preset, it will save um, all of those that are in there. 91, all right, Dustify. Thank you, Tracy, for Dustifying the like button. Um, thank you, Lewis. Uh, he, Lewis likes that tip, thank you. All right, so let's have a look at what you guys have shared on our Facebook group this week. Um, so we have a group on Facebook. Just go to Facebook and look for Photoshop Cafe group. It's um, uh, whatever it is, Photoshop Cafe. Uh, let me bring it up here so I can give it to you. Hang on one sec. Normally Bruce posts these links in here, but he is obviously dealing probably with a cat is going to be my guess he has some uh, some cats he fosters cats and uh, they quite often have to go to the vet um so let's go in here and here's our group i'm gonna just grab the link here i'm gonna post this in posting this link in here and there's the link is in the chat there guys if you want to join our facebook group our facebook group is here it's called photoshop cafe art tutorials and challenges and this is you guys so just join there and i will approve you after this live stream if you want to go in there so this is what you guys have posted in the last week warren i, I just something about this is just really cool i love that you know what it is well i mean everyone likes cats i mean there's, there's definitely that if you want uh you know you definitely want to do cats you are never going to go wrong but i like the composition here i actually like the big cat here with the um, distant cat in the distance. Just very, very nice, nice composition, following the rules of thirds uh, and all that stuff. Just beautiful composition. I like it. All right. So next one here, Philip Neal. Philip Neal does these by hand. He paints these from scratch. And he says he's admitting he's not good at backgrounds and landscapes yet. I, I don't know. That looks pretty good to me. He painted these from scratch. And of course, the bear and everything. So Philip Neal, I don't know if you're in the house or not, but um, he's a very good uh, painter inside of Photoshop. Good job. Thank you for that, Philip. And this one, Hana, this is just too funny. Um, so Hana, are you there? I, I just love this. We've got, you know, the uh, Sphinx cats, the uh, hairless cats here, hyperallergenic. And they're messing around with these mice and this little ball of yarn. I just, it's just very funny. It's very humorous. Um, love the mouse in the bowl. And Hannah, yes, of course, there you are. I love your sense of humor. Um, it's just, you know, it's very, very fun, very cute. This mouse is hiding like, oh no, <laughs> the cats can't get me. Um, funny. And then another one from Hannah. So you shared a couple this week, and I thought I would do this as well. And this has some symbolism, I'm sure, with these eggs hanging from the string and the snake and the uh, feathers. I'm not sure what the symbolism is here, but um, I'm going to guess there's some kind of a symbolism going on here with this. Um, so uh, if you want to leave that a mystery, you can leave that a mystery. If you want to share that with us, um, you know, go ahead and tell us, or maybe it's just abstract you know and the feathers are inside is a delicacy something about light and delicate with the eggs and then the snake is 
danger? I, I, I'm not sure there. Um, so, Hana can keep that a mystery and let the symbolism be to your... If you lived in Oklahoma, you know about birds and snakes. Okay, so something to do with birds and snakes in Oklahoma? Just abstract, says Hana. So that's what I like about abstract is, you know, it's the viewer can decide, you know, the meaning of the photo. Um, you know, sometimes there isn't. And sometimes there is. All right. So like Andrew Nichols here looks like Andrew Nichols is having fun touching the like. Are you in the house there, Andrew? The snake ate the birds. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, uh, maybe it did. That's kind of sad. Um all right, so this here, um, I don't know if you're using the Boris effects optics. I'm going to guess you are for these uh, effects here. Um, nice job here. Uh, yes, and I agree with Polkadot Studios. Good separation there with the feathers. Good job of separating those. Um, nice style. All right, guys. So it looks like that's all we have time for this week. Thank you for joining us and um so do me a favor one last plea for the like button <laughs> just hit that like button um it helps with the youtube algorithm if you just if you're not yet subscribed then uh, hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications you won't miss any of our videos so every tuesday i do a um tutorial and uh, i'll just to let you guys know too um since I've, I've got you here i'm just going to pop into our youtube really quick and i just want to show you um, what we do so every Tuesday I do a quick tutorial quick tip something like this I'm um, just going to our YouTube channel right now I'm gonna put it on the screen in one second here and let's get that screen up okay so here we are this is our YouTube channel um, so make sure you subscribe and um, so this is our live stream it's going right now this will be a replay soon but I did this uh, blur background, uh, which is kind of a, a fun tutorial using the neural filters. A couple of settings. I found there's three settings that um, really make a difference in getting a more realistic background blur. So check that out. It's like a three minute or two minute, two minute video. Very, very quick. And also for those of you Boris effects, um, we did a live stream last week, Optics 2022, but I dropped a review last night which is an eight and a half minute video, which is more concise, shows the new features and a couple of tips there on how to use that. So check these out after our live stream. And uh, all right, guys, till next time, I'll see you at the cafe. And now I've just got to find a button to stop the stream, which is always fun. So I see the end stream button there. All right, guys. Oh, 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 before I go, before I go, before I go. One other thing. I don't know if you guys are into shorts or not. Um, let me get you back on the screen on the desktop. Here we are on the desktop there. This is the Photoshop Cafe channel. <laughs> There's the blur background. And that's the Boris FX one. So just go there, Photoshop Cafe, and check it out. But the other thing I just want to mention, I've just been experimenting with some shorts. So I've, every day I've dropped a different short. It's less than a one minute quick photoshop tutorial dropped it on here also on tiktok and also on instagram stories all right guys this time see ya